Yeah. Now, like last time we had you on, um, I talked about about your involvement in Big Brother. <laughs> your life. But looking back on it, there there wasn't any real uh, like discussion of how you found Big Brother. And I wonder if like if there was uh, like a kind of a, a synopsis of like graduating high school in Tennessee, moving out to like what happened between graduating high school and, and finding Big Brother. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't, you know, I moved out to become an actor, but and I'd taken some classes and I went to the American, American Academy of Dramatic Arts for like six weeks. Um, but I was kind of just spinning my wheels and then my then girlfriend got pregnant. I'm like, I, I need to do something. And so a friend of mine got me a job writing for a couple of magazines. I started writing for magazines. Uh, I lived next door to Ant Antoine Fuqua, the director, and he got me, a, he sent me to a casting director who got me a commercial agent. So I was just had all these sticks in the fire. And one day I show up on the set of Spike Jones was helping Jake Fogelnest. I guess he was co-directing a video with Jake Fogelnest uh, for Wax. And I remember it was, the, it, it's unfortunate, but it was on the day the Oklahoma City bomb bombing mm. happened because that was going, people told me on set. And Jeff, that's the first time I met Jeff. He was in the video. and Jeff uh, Tremaine. Yeah. Yeah. And I told him I wrote. He's like, oh, you got to come by and check out the magazine. And I didn't even get to be in the video. I had to go to wait on tables. <laughs> wow. You know? <laughs> so I was like, oh. And, and then I don't know how much time passed before I went down to... Uh, down south to see uh, Jeff at was World Industries. Okay. He wasn't even at Flint yet. Right. Hmm. And I walked around. He gave me a tour. And I think it was a little bit little, over a year or so or maybe longer before I got the idea. Maybe a couple years before I got the idea to do the self-defense equipment. He was the only magazine that would support me and helping me buy the stun gun, taser gun, and because I had no money. I blew all the money I had. My mom gave me 300 bucks for Christmas and I got the cheapest bulletproof vest they had. And then I was sunk, right? So <laughs> I needed support from Tremaine and he gave it to me. Did you not um, pitch the self-defense idea to like Howard Stern and the talk shows? And Yeah, yeah, I, I faxed. Nice. My idea to Howard Stern, <laughs> and, and like pretty far and wide, like everywhere that could possibly. Host oh it. yeah, like I pitched it to Details Magazine, like everyone you can think of, and almost across the board, people liked the idea, but they kind of wanted to treat it as a negative pickup. They didn't. Yeah. They're like, when you're done with it, bring it to us. We can't right. be a part of it until then. And, but I don't even think, I didn't even hear back from Stern, but much later he goes, I just thought you were some nut, you yeah. know, <laughs> which that's fair, you know. Around the same time I was pitching to Howard Stern that I would come and douse my entire body with rubbing alcohol, be set on fire and there in my boxer shorts and do backflips, like, and uh, I they didn't want that either. Jeez. Did you imagine that? <laughs> Moron. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, kind yeah. of, uh, what kind of articles were you writing when you were writing articles? Um, I, I like, uh, you know, I, I love Hunter S. Thompson, so a lot of participatory journalism type stuff. I'd go somewhere or do something and write about it. And freelance, you'd submit it to different magazines all yeah, over? Yeah, yeah. And as you were writing, you were getting commercial gigs too, right? Luckily, I started... When my first year I started auditioning for commercials, full year, not one call back. And then my next year I got like 12 commercials. And uh, I didn't think you did that anymore. <laughs> it's just water, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I was very lucky because I had a kid then. And, and that... That's how you met Preston. You guys were delivered, like, 
Because we were talking about, you know, some of the worst jobs that, you know, people had. Before. Preston, I think, had some of the worst jobs. Um, one of his jobs, he, he worked at a, a waste disposal place. And there was a screen that caught all the condoms and tampons and everything. <laughs> and he had to squeegee that screen. That was his job. Oh my I'm like, God. you win, Preston. <laughs> Did I? Did you not meet Preston on a commercial audition? It wasn't. It was the no. I I met Preston through friends. I think through beautiful Jason. Oh yeah. And through that group is how I first met Preston. But when the show we were getting the show for Jackass, he was also my then wife had a jewelry line, and we need people to like make the jewelry and bag it and tag it. And Preston was sitting on the couch bagging and tagging the jewelry along with myself and whoever else we could find. Nice. I'm like, hey, you want to be on a show? He's like, sure. What came <laughs> What came first, Jackass or the offer to do stunts on Saturday Night Live? Um, Jackass came first. And right as we were getting ready to go make the pilot, because the deal... Took for it took over a year for the deal to get done for Jackass. Yeah, what, what made it so slow? <clears throat> I don't know. You have to talk to the lawyers. The but it took forever. That they're gonna have to have the. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, but at the eleventh hour, I got the offer from Saturday Night Live, and I went to the Beverly Hills Hotel and met Lauren Michaels in the Polo Lounge, which incidentally is where. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas started out Hunter S. Thompson's novel. So I'm, I don't know, it was another connection to Hunter. And God, it was, it was, you know, I was going to get five minutes on the show to do like a stunt or a prank every week. And, uh, and for a guy who was waiting tables and suddenly I, I, oh, I got this pilot I'm about to shoot. And then Saturday Night Live wants me to do something. And it was a lot, <laughs> you know, because it's like, Everything could fail. I could make the wrong decision, but I just thought, God, I'm just going to bet on myself and my friends. Because on SNL, I would have been lucky to be on SNL, but I wouldn't have any control, you know? Right. And, you know, like, Jackass is big on tone. And if I'm not controlling the tone along with, you know, Jeff and Spike, it's... I don't know. I, I just bet on myself. And it could have been a big failure. I know we tried our best, but it succeeded. Yeah. Do you like shopping on Amazon? I do. And good news is Steve-O's butt wipes for your butthole are available on Amazon. And if you want a real bundle of a deal, you can get Steve-O's hot sauce for your butthole, plus Steve-O's butthole destroyer, and Steve-O's butt wipes for your butthole. It's the butthole bundle, available on Amazon right now. Yeah, dude.